Moses, let's first ask you about your um, reaction to the change in head coach. Obviously, first Dean's um, departure to Aston Villa. Was that a, a shock to you guys and to the rest of the players? Um, not really. I think it was a credit a credit to to the players, you know, for the gaffer to attract interest from big clubs, you know, and I think once they came calling, the guy, he emphasised that it was his home, homegrown club, you know, and, and growing up, you know, he, he wished of even playing there or even managing there, you know, and I think once the opportunity came, he, he had to take it. And what about obviously Thomas Frank coming in as head coach, you've known him for a while. How do you and the players feel about, about that point? I think it's always good for someone to come in who the players, like you said, know. Um, and when the gaffer was here, you know, Thomas would probably take training, training a lot of the times. So and he'd install like the things that he wants us to do as players, you know. And I've, I think nothing really changes now. The only thing is he's the he's the guy at the front who the fans are gonna <laughs> the, the fans are gonna hammer if things don't go right. Um, but no, I think w as players we're confident in him that he's gonna he's gonna get the job done, you know, and he's gonna have us playing the same football we played under Dean Smith and, and, and when I was here under Matt Auburn. So that's ideal then for you to have that, that continuity as a player, to have somebody who's been around before and can just continue the good things you've been doing and I guess add to it? <clears throat> yeah, he's, he's certainly going to add to it I think as a, as a coach, you know, um, he's very hands on on the pitch like today, you know, he likes to stop and start things and if it's not right he'll, he'll let the lads know, you know, and I think everyone know now everyone now know, knows that they, they need to work for the position, you know, and it's and it's going to be tough the upcoming weeks. You've obviously been at this club before, and this is your second spell, so you know it well. You know the structures, you know how things work. How are you feeling that here in your in your in your second time? Because obviously you've been through a, a couple of bad years before now. Yeah, I think it's uh, as the days go on. I'm just taking taking steps in the right direction. Um, still not obviously where I want to be physically, but um, I've just got to be thankful. You know that after such a long spell out. Um, I'm I'm back playing, which is the main thing, you know, and and it's going to take time. But I think as the, the days go on and as as I play more games, you know, I'm only going to reach um, where where I left off. Do you, do you look back to like a year ago or eighteen months ago and and think about you know how you were feeling then physically and and, and I guess psychologically as well to how you are now? And do you, I mean how to, how does it feel? Yeah, you know what? Funny enough, <clears throat> I spoke to one of my friends yesterday, just about like. He was moaning about things, and he just said, "Look, last this time last year, look, look where you were, you know, and 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 look where you are now." And I think you got a lot of you got a lot of things to be grateful for, you know, that that you're back, you're back playing football, the, the thing you love, you know. So, I think for me, it's it's our only positive step, you know, and I got to keep making steps in the right direction. So, what are you hoping to achieve then from yourself from a personal point of view this season? I think this season, <clears throat> I just want to play as many as many games as possible. You know, if, if that's that's in a spell or if it's one in, one out or or whatever it is. But I want to play as many games as I can to show everyone that I'm fit and I still can do what I did before. And obviously, we, we also want to talk to you about this, the charity, the malaria charity. Obviously, it's something that's close to your to, to your heart and, and, yep. and with your mother and things like that. So, can you tell us a little bit about you know your, your story and your experience with? With malaria and what happened with your, with your yeah, so I think a lot of a lot of people already know now because the story's obviously been going around for um, a couple of years. Um, but I lost my mum when I was 12 years old to to this disease that um, that we call malaria. Um, and when I moved to Hull, I put my story out into I think it was the Hull Daily Mail and um, Malaria No More UK. They actually got hold of the story and um, contacted me and, and, and asked me whether I wanted to. To um, to step up and join a charity, and the minute they got they got in contact, I just thought, you know, I can if I can do something to help um, a family not go through what me and my brothers went through, then I'm, I'm then I'm all for it, you know. And and as the years went on, I built a good relationship with the people down at the charity, you know. And and I ended up coming a special ambassador, which um, which has been good because I've been involved in a, in a lot of good things that have been happening recently. Um, so. <clears throat> when they found out that I'd moved back to Brentford, you know, um, Peter Gillam here does a lot of charity stuff, and he asked the players about um, if they follow any charities and if if they like to raise money for the charities. And I wrote down obviously M malaria, um, no more UK, you know, and he was very interested. And um, and we're fortunate enough to be raising money this this week. If no one, if you guys don't know, 
um, but we're going to be raising money for for the charity, you know, and, and it's going to hopefully that that money's going to go a long way to to ending the cause for good, you know, and the stats, the statistics that I read and I've been told about the disease is is crazy. Like a kid dies every two minutes in in Africa, which is which is mad when you, when you think about it, really, you know, and 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 just one pound could save someone's life, um, and I think I think that's that's the main the main thing that I want to push, and hopefully this weekend everyone comes together, you know, and, and donates. And how do you think that um, experience of, of what you went through with your family, with your with your mum at that time, how has that you know impacted your, your football career? What what lessons do you think you learned from that? Um, it's 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 bad to say, but I feel like it's been a, a blessing in, in disguise. Is when when footballers get hit with long term injuries, you know, it it causes depression, it causes a lot of things, you know, and and football becomes your life. Like you you sleep and drink football, you know, and when someone takes that one thing away from you, it's kind of like, okay, what what do I do now? I feel useless. But when I was put in that situation, when I sat down with the um, with the surgeon, he said, oh it's going to be 12 months or it's going to be whatever he said. Um, for me, it was kind of a kick in the teeth, but then I thought, you know what, there's more strings to my bow, you know, and, and this isn't the end, this isn't the end, you know, and there's always going to, going to be a big comeback. And what, what did you do then to, to help yourself through that, that time? And obviously you were doing your, your rehabilitation and, and all the physical work that you were doing, but what kind of things did you do to keep yourself in good spirits and occupy yourself? Um... I watched I watched a lot of series on, <laughs> on Netflix. Um, I took up I took up another language, which is which I'm still learning. Um, took up Spanish, which kind of took my brain away from just just doing nothing, you know. And and when I was on crutches, I tried to try to get myself into like a routine again because I was told to stay in, like to do nothing for three months. So I, <clears throat> in the first month, I kind of lost. A routine of waking up when I wanted to, eating what I wanted to eat. Um, but halfway through that, I just thought, you know, I can, I can make a little difference. You know, that's gonna make a big difference in the long run. And um, I started by just having a routine. If it was daily, just try and go and walk in, walk around in the garden on the crutches, wake up, shower. Even though showering took probably two hours because <laughs> I had to hop in and hop out and um, try not to do anything to my knee. You know, but. Um, I got into a good a good routine, you know, and I think that that helped me mentally. Thanks, boss. No worries. Um, just just in regards to bouncing back from, from an injury like that. So when you get that opportunity to get back out onto onto the green in a, in a competitive game as well, how did that feel? I mean, for, from from your point of view, you know, having gone through some pretty tough times, no doubt, in in the worst bits of of your recovery. I think more more of a like relief, you know, like mm -hmm. to say the the clouds kind of lifted over that that dark cloud that you've had over your years for well that I've had over my years for for two years um just to lift that away was just like a like a big sigh like a, a relief um then for me the next part of that is lifting that cloud and then getting back to where I was you know and it's it's tough because you've got to kind of take small steps and when you do go over that line like every player who, who gets injured and who knows the situation it's like your body's not really ready just yet. And I think that's the frustrating part about being injured that fans don't really see and, and you guys don't really see. But just, like I said before, the, the small steps make a, make a big difference. Yeah. I mean, how disciplined do you have to be with, with that? You have to be disciplined with, with your life to make sure you don't obviously get too down. You have to be disciplined when you come back though, don't you? Because no doubt you want to, as they say, run before you can walk. Yeah, yeah no, it's it's like every player, you know, you, you feel little things and you just try and brush it under the carpet because you don't want to go back in the gym. Yeah. Because <clears throat> every player leaves the gym at 10.30 to train and, and you're in there still still doing stuff, looking out the window, you know. And I think sometimes, like like you said, you know, you need to walk before you can run. So it's, it's, it's just about knowing your body, you know. And, and getting the opportunity to come back to Brentford, I know you, you know your first spell here wasn't long, but did, did it feel like it was a positive move coming back, coming home, coming you know it, a kick start to a career in a familiar environment? Yeah, like like I say to my friends all the time, like now, I feel like I've just just made my, my first team debut, you know, as a as a youngster, you know, and and, and doing it here where I know the, the backroom staff, the, the physios, it it makes life a little bit a little bit easier, you know, and. and 
I stayed good friends with um, some of the players here when I left the first time. So it's, it's like coming back to a, to a group that I've, I've kind of been familiar with. So yeah, yeah it helps. And you can practice in Spanish now with Sergio. Yeah, we, we practice sometimes, but when I'm tired, it, it goes out the window. <laughs> uh, just in regards to the, to the malaria story, just going back to that, you, you say obviously it's fantastic that the club are collecting this weekend. Um, how important is it not just, I mean, the financial side of, of charities are important, but it's also about awareness, isn't it? About awareness of, of how dra desperately drastic this, this, can, this, this disease is and how easy it is to solve it. Yeah, like, funny you say that because before my mum died of malaria, like we used to go on holiday and get the jabs and I just thought, oh, we're getting jabbed, mom's gonna hurt again for, for a couple of days. Um and not only till she 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 got the disease was when I just felt like, you know, this is something that happens all over the world, you know, and we don't hear about these stories and it's it's sad. And when I went to the um I went to the I'm trying to think I went to a summit in Trafalgar Square not too long ago, and I was l lucky enough to meet um, Charlie Webster, mm -hmm. the, the cyclist, um, who she got malaria in Brazil, I think it was, she caught malaria in Brazil. Yeah. Um, and she spoke to me about how how it felt, you know, and, and I was intrigued to, to what she was feeling, you know, and, and, and some of the things she was saying, it, it broke my heart, you know, and for a disease that can be stopped, and hopefully we do stop it, I just don't understand why people why people wouldn't join in and help. And your mum's still an inspiration. Yeah, she she is, man. She she had a legacy, you know. When when she was alive, she 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 wanted she gave she she grounded us, I would say, kind of thing, you know. And it, I think that helps us now going forward. And and the same thing she installed into us back then is what we use now. To, and and it's like our motivation to an extent, you know. And, and every day we wake up as brothers. Um, we all just we all strive for the best, and we push each other on to to do as well as we can. Just in regards to you, you talk about making your debut. Obviously, you made your debut over the other side of London uh, at Orient. Um, do you still keep tabs on what's happened there? Because what's happened since you've left has been has been pretty a uh, sorry tale, isn't it? To see for anyone connected with the football club, but it's improving again now. Yeah, no, I was quite <clears throat> I was quite sad because when I moved to Hull, um, Curtis Davis. Mm. He, he's a, he was a uh, late Orient fan as well, so we had that in common, you know. And, and what, what what was happening down there at the time was, was was sad to to look at, to be honest with you. But like you said, I'm glad now that that things are going in the right direction, you know. And and a club like that that I owe a lot to, you know, it it is it is bad. But I think it's 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 moving in the right direction, and, and hopefully they can get back mm. into the football league. Mm. And, and just from your point of view, you want to play as many games as you can that your body and your your medical advice will allow you to play one. And there are good times here potentially at Brentford, aren't there? It's an exciting time to come back to the club. Yeah, it's definitely exciting. The club's the club's going in the right direction. The ambition of the club's big. Like the the, the new stadium speaks for itself. Like if you, I don't know if you've driven past there, but it's it's going to be massive, you know. And I think the credit the credit is is down to the players and, and everyone at this club because the club's on TV a lot more than they've ever been. Like when I was here. Brentford versus Leeds away. That would that wouldn't be a TV fixture, you know, and, and it shows it shows how far the club has come, you know, and and it shows that there's potential for this club to to go all the way, and and you can see the players who leave the club every year, you know, it's, it speaks for itself, and, and we we've lost our manager two three months into the season. It, it shows that that this club has it's got something special. Mm. And do you get excited when you drive past? Yeah, I live I live literally across the road from it. So I see it. I see it most mornings, you know, and 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 for for the lads to be playing there, for my hopefully for myself to be playing there um, in the upcoming seasons, it should be good. Okay, Brent, that's nice. No worries. Was just going back to a pre-season friendly at Wickham. Uh, you were on the bench, which was I think the first game back uh, in public, anyway. And I took a picture of you and tweeted it with a caption saying Moses is back in Brentford Strip. And lots of people kind of said great, and one person said he doesn't look very happy. I mean, I suppose the truth is you were pretty nervous, were you? Um, I wouldn't say I was nervous. Yeah. It was probably just more more focused, you know. Like it was, like you said, my first game back, and just a lot of a lot of thoughts were going on in my head prior to my to my first injury. So I just felt like I needed to to concentrate, and 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 that's what I did. And when I came on, you know, I wanted to be positive, and I got I think I got a penalty in that game. Yeah, do you create so, Penalty opportunity, yeah. So I stayed, I stayed focused, yeah. and it and it worked. So, yeah. and of course, in games when you have uh, got a chance recently, you you played at various times, left back, right back, and you actually 
came in on the, on the wing quite recently. Is it an advantage or a disadvantage to be seen as somebody who's kind of flexible about their position of excuse expression? Um, it's never. I don't think it's never a disadvantage. It's never a disadvantage. Mm. Um, it just shows that you've got more more strings to your bow, you know. And for me, I, if I can help up front in goal, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna do it for the team, you know, because everyone in that dressing room wants one thing. Um, and that's that's to play play at the highest um, to play in the highest league in the world, you know. And if everyone has that mentality, we, we should be right. Just one point on the uh, malaria story. I looked at the, the website. There's one one interesting detail, which is your mother contracted uh, the disease. I think in, in Ghana whilst as a nurse. Yeah. <laughs> and when she realised that she got it, she she chose to be treated in Africa. Is that right? Yeah. What what, what, was, what lay behind that? Um, I think it's. It's her one being hard headed, um, and two just a lot of a lot of my uh, family. They kind of they don't really believe in the NHS in a, in a bad way, um, and they feel like they can they can go back to Africa and get and get treatment for for whatever they're feeling at the time, you know. And she had that in her mind that she was going to go there. And as kids, we didn't know the extent. Of what she actually had, so we just thought it was she would come down with a with a flu, with a heavy flu, um, which could be treated in uh, in Africa, and that that wasn't the case, you know. So that must have made her, you know, her passing even more difficult, was it? That you didn't really see that much of her in the final days. Is that is that the way it was? Yeah, it was tough. Like she always used to travel because she was a sexual health advisor, so she was always doing road shows, going here, there, and everywhere. Um, and obviously, when when she didn't come back, you know, it, for me, I, I went into like a, a state of shock um, for several months, um, and that and that's that's how I dealt with it. Whereas my brothers, they they cried and let it all out, you know, and and they showed emotion, but people take to things differently, and and I think that's why I wanted to back this charity as far as I can because I don't want another fa a young family to go through what we had to go through, you know, and if it can be stopped. Um, Let's stop it.